Okay, so we have really begun investigating the first module, Matter and Measurement. We're going to now look at classification of matter. Here we're going to try and distinguish or recognize the states of matter and try to tell the difference between pure substances and mixtures. So for classification of matter, we are only going to deal in this course with the main three states, solid, liquid, gas. And then for pure substances, we'll look at what constitutes a pure substance as well as the types of, mat of mixtures. So, there, stop. Um, the scientific method starts with observations. One of those observations could be about matter. And so we can use those observations to really try and classify the matter that we are seeing. So remember, matter is anything that has mass and occupies space and is going to exist as either a solid, liquid, or a gas. In fact, in this image here, we have solid ice under, with, on top of liquid water, and then the atmosphere has the gaseous water vapor as well. And so here we have all three states existing together. Oops. So for example, here we have an image of the three states of matter. Here this is a solid. You can see it's very rigidly packed. It has um, particles that are close together with a definite shape and a definite volume. Here we have a liquid. The particles are also very close together. They have a definite uh, volume, but they're going to take the shape of the container. And so if I were to pour this from a beaker into, say, a fishbowl, it's going to be a different shape. Gas, on the other hand, we have particles that are very far apart, and they have neither a definite volume nor shape. We could really compress these down. If we were to open this, it's going to take the shape of the room or another container that it goes into. So here we have a solid. Oh, come on, work. That uh, may not. There it goes. A solid has a definite volume and shape. They are rigid and tightly packed particles. Really all you can get here is um, slight vibration. You can kind of see these particles could not go past one another. They are stuck. They just get slight vibrations that are um, possible. We also could not really compress this because they're so close together as it is. Now, in general, the best macroscopic example of a solid I could give you is this. Oops. <laughs> okay. We will go here instead. This is the one I believe we have. Now, the idea here is you have people that are going to be as closely packed as the atoms of a solid are. You can kind of tell when this um, train goes by. You can tell when this train goes by, um, the people are going to be um, pr 
pressed against the window, it is going to be very difficult to um, for them to move past one another. You're, they're going to be able to slightly breathe, which I guess is the equivalent of um, the vibrations we saw in the video a second ago. You can kind of tell all of these people are really trying really hard to close that door. Now, um, again, these people could not move past one another. They are packed, shall we say. Okay. Um, in fact, I think there's one over here that has the coat really um, closely together. Okay. Now, um, if we look, go back to our PowerPoint, a liquid is going to be very similar to a solid in how closely packed the particles are. They are very close together. Um, but unlike a solid that has both a definite volume and, and a definite shape, here you have a definite volume, but the shape can take that of the container. So here we have very close together particles that are slowly moving. They can move past one another, but it's going to be very tight. Um, again, just like a solid, you cannot compress a liquid. Now, to me, the best example of a macroscopic uh, liquid visualization is something like Black Friday, okay? Oops. I believe this is the one you guys have a link to. Interesting. Well, this is one of the examples um, of why technology is not always the best to try. No. There it goes. Okay, so um, here we have Black Friday crowd. Just like a solid, these people are very closely packed together. Now eventually somebody like the girl in the green hat could move over here, but it's going to take a lot of effort. In addition, these guys have a very definite amount of space they have to take up, so they have a definite volume. But as soon as these doors open, they are going to um, pour into the store and therefore take the shape of the store. And so in a second here, they are going to open that. There we go. Here we go. So when he opens this, it is going to have people pour past them and take up the shape of the um, of the uh, of the store. There we go. Just like that. The volume of the people is the same. It is just like a liquid being poured from one container to another. Sorry about the delay, guys. It's a little difficult without a mouse. So that is the best macroscopic example of a liquid that I could give you. Now, in general, there we go. A gas is the last state. 
here we have a variable volume and a variable shape. That is because these particles are very, very far apart. And so when you have these particles far apart, um, they could be easily compressed to take up a less or expanded to take up more volume. They can also take up um, the shape of any container they're in, so they have a variable volume and shape. It's also important to note that par these particles are in random and rapid as well as constant motion. It's like a bunch of kindergartners on sugar or bouncy balls. They move very, very quickly and a um, constant rapid motion. So really think about how you can distinguish between states of matter. You may want to do it visually like in the sample questions or think about the definitions themselves. Now as far as those states of matter, we're going to classify them as either pure substances or mixtures. Pure substances can only be split apart by chemical methods. There's no way to further simplify them. Mixtures can be something that we separate using some kind of physical means. So a pure substance is either something like an element found on the periodic table, or it could be a molecule, which is two or more atoms bonded together. So we could have oxygen, which is actually two oxygen atoms bonded together, sodium or iron, which is found on the periodic table as is. Now, oxygen is technically an element, but it's diatomic. It is a Hofbrinkle. All of these elements exist in nature as diatomic atoms. H, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, and chlorine. No matter what, when you find them in nature, it's never going to be fluorine, for example. It's F2. There's always going to be two bonded together. So those elements are always present as diatomic elements. Pure substances um, could also be compounds, which is two or more different types of elements bonded together. Something like water, which we saw earlier, table salt, or it could be one of your potentially favorite compounds, which is caffeine. I wonder how many of you guys are actually drinking coffee right now. Um, but the idea here is once they are bonded together, you can't just separate them with a filter. You have to go through a chemical method to really separate these out. Mixtures are going to be physically mixed, but not chemically combined. Here you have more than one substance mixed together, um, kind of like uh, sand and water, or um, ice cream and hot fudge. Something that is easily separated. You could separate sand from water by using a filter, or you could evaporate the water off. Um, it is going to be something that does not change the composition. The only way to really take apart a, um, to separate an, a an uh, atom or an element from its native state is to do something really chemical. Um, how do you split an atom? The only way to do that is with an H-bomb. Um, and so that bomb is a chemical means because it takes away the atom that was there and makes something new. Same thing with compounds. The only way to separate these is by doing something that is going to change the method. You can't just evaporate water and have it turn into hydrogen and oxygen, okay? You have to have a chemical reaction that is going to separate it into those two elements. The difference is for mixtures, you can use a filter, you can use distillation, um, and you can do something that is going to allow the different components to be the same, but separate. Now mixtures can either be homogeneous or heterogeneous. Homogeneous is the same throughout. Heterogeneous is going to be different. You can see those different components there. Homogeneous mixtures are something like, um, if you've ever had rock candy, you can pretty much guarantee every part of that sucker is going to taste the same. 
Kool-Aid, coffee, or brass are also homogenous mixtures. Guys, notice brass on here. Mixtures can be solid, gas, or liquid. It doesn't matter. So I've got a solid mixture here that's sugar, some kind of flavor, um, all mixed together homogeneously. You could also have air is a mixture. Um, and brass. Brass is actually um, two types of metals where you have one mixed um, interspersed with the other. I couldn't find an image that wasn't licensed. I'll try to get one uploaded eventually. But the idea is brass is a homogeneous mixture. Please make sure you remember that. Heterogeneous mixtures are going to be things that you can see the different components of. Muddy water, you can usually see the mud start to settle. Raisin bran, you could pick out the raisins if you didn't want them. Um, soil, and then here's another food um, example of cookies that have chocolate chips. You could very easily see um, the components here versus here. Now the dough itself might be a homogeneous mixture but this cookie is heterogeneous because I can see this component versus the dough. Soil is heterogeneous because you can pick out leaves or sticks or roots or rocks from um, the other instances. This is kind of my best way of giving you an idea of how to do flashcards for this section. You have matter that can be either pure substances which contains only one component that can only be separated by chemical means. <sighs> pure substances that contain only one type of atom are elements. These are on the periodic table, guys. The only difference would be Hofbrinkles are going to be diatomic, not single atoms. Pure substances where you have multiple types of atoms are going to be compounds, things like salt or water. If matter has more than one component, that can be separated by a physical method. You have mixtures um, that can either be homogeneous or heterogeneous. So what is a jar of jelly beans? Pure substance or mixture? Hopefully you say mixture. Homogeneous or heterogeneous? Hopefully you can say it is heterogeneous because you can pick out the really good ones, especially if you have jelly, bean, jelly bellies or um, so on. You can kind of pick them out by the coloring. Whipped cream, pure substance or mixture? Hopefully you have an idea that it's a mixture. This is a homogenous mixture of um, air, cream, and sugar, I guess. Air. This is my tricky one. Um, air is technically a mixture. And as far as homogeneous or heterogeneous, it depends. Um, you could say that it's homogeneous if you have a closed container where nothing is coming in or out. You could also say it's heterogeneous, say, in the classroom or uh, around you because as you're breathing out you're increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in your general vicinity. Um, you can also think about it like an open room as being heterogeneous because say somebody opens a bag of Doritos the smell of the Doritos would be close to that area but not necessarily everywhere and so um, the air is heterogeneous in an open container. Carbon dioxide this is a compound, so it is, oops, that's a pure substance. Steel. Steel is not on the periodic table, so it's got to be a mixture of some kind. And hopefully it's not going to be heterogeneous because then bridges might have major issues, so we're going to call this homogeneous. Nitrogen gas. Nitrogen is on the periodic table, so it's a pure substance, and it's an element. 
How about gasoline? Also a challenging one to me. Gasoline's not on the periodic table, so it must be a mixture. Well, it's not a, on the periodic table and it's not a compound. Um, the other way you know this is because all of our gas is now something like 10% ethanol. So you have gas and ethanol components there. Um, as far as the type of mixture, hopefully it's homogenous so that your car uh, runs well. That is the end of this unit.